over the past few weeks on this channel we've talked a lot about some of the meta commanders in the game whether we were talking about the best 5511 commanders or the best 5551 or talking about the seven must-have legendary commanders in the game or talking about Liu Che and the new smite damage mechanic no matter how you look at it we've been talking a lot about the season of conquest late game meta and there's been a small handful of you guys who said hey on the arc this is great I know what the meta is but what are some alternatives that I can be using maybe from the gold key that are still somewhat viable in season of conquest so today I'm gonna go over the top five best gold key legendaries in rise of kingdoms because a lot of you guys are new players maybe you don't have enough legendary commander sculptures to invest in the latest and greatest things so hopefully some of these commanders can sub in and get you by in a pinch but first what's going on guys cheers and before we jump into this I just want to set the expectation that even as the top five best gold key commanders in the game we're really talking about like B tier commanders okay maybe you could make the argument that the top one or three spots could be an a tier in the perfect best case scenarios but for a majority of you out there who maybe don't have these commanders expertise which is probably a majority of you we're talking about b tier and lower okay so that's not to say that these commanders are garbage or useless or anything like that they're actually decent but i just want to set the expectation that we're not talking about the latest and greatest s and s plus tier like super meta best in the game okay so don't go out dumping hundreds and hundreds of legendary commander sculptures into these commanders because the legendary commander sculptures are better spent elsewhere now with that being said let's jump into number five on the list here and I just want to be clear that the rankings here are they're very loose okay you could make the argument that four and five could be switched you could make the argument that two and three could be switched it really just depends on the scenario but number five on the list in my opinion is Mulan now here's the thing with Mulan as a general commander I think that she is not the greatest but she has a few niche roles where she is one of your best possible options and you still see Mulan shining in Sunset Canyon and Lost Canyon and you also see her used a lot in Ark of Osiris as well and I also see her behind Trajan in the open field in KVK especially when you have a rally leader out on the field hitting a particular target you can use that Trajan Mulan nearby to theoretically buff your rally so there's a lot of really niche instances where Mulan is actually incredible now we can go through her skills really briefly but what you'll see at the top of the screen is sort of a quick summary of what exactly it is that Mulan is doing now her active skill is one of the best support active skills in the entire game but there's a big flaw with this active skill and that is that the duration is only two seconds unless she is expertise in which case it actually makes it a much more effective active skill and also increases its duration by a second which going from two to three seconds doesn't sound like it's anything crazy right but you have to consider that that is a 33 percent longer duration than it was pre expertise right so when this commander is expertise it's going to give you 60 percent of stats for three seconds and 30 percent march speed okay the stats are split across attack defense and health and it's a circular aoe buff which is really nice her second skill reduces surrounded damage that you take by five percent not that crazy also when you're attacked there's a 20 percent chance to reduce the attacker's rage by a hundred now this does have a five second cooldown but what's cool here is that it doesn't have to be you launching a normal attack so in other words if you're being surrounded by a few different targets there's a 20 percent chance of each target having that 100 rage reduction now it is a five second cooldown still but the probability that this goes off is very very high even though it is only 20 percent if you are being surrounded her third skill really doesn't do anything in the open field and the fourth skill gives you a flat 20 percent attack and her active skill causes the target that you're hitting to take 20 percent increased damage for three seconds which is a really powerful debuff now being a gold key commander she also has access to the museum so her double relic gives her 20 percent health and 15 percent skill damage taken reduction which is really nice and the fact that this is just universal right there's no troop type here you could throw her behind anybody so like i said before as a support commander and as a secondary she is really great but if you look at her total stats right it's only 40 percent split across attack and health and that's the lowest amount of total stats on the entire list of this video 
so really you're not going to be dealing that much damage you're not going to be very tanky you have one role and that is to support the armies near you so if you're not looking for that mulan isn't great but when you do need that she is the best place to turn to with that being said let's move on to number four on the list and that is none other than charles martel now for the longest time people would argue that charles martel is the best gold key commander in rise of kingdoms and as you can tell by his placement in this video i think things have definitely changed but that doesn't mean that charles martel can't still have some really good niche uses and can't still fill that role of good secondary or maybe even primary in season of conquest in a pinch okay again remember what i said at the beginning of this video this is not an s tier commander okay i think the days of him being meta are long gone but i do think that he is still aged pretty nicely his active skill gives him 30 percent increased damage for four seconds that is a really powerful all damage buff for a significant amount of time and he also gets a 1200 damage factor shield which means if you're dueling somebody one-on-one -on -one, this is going to be very beneficial to you the second skill if he's expertise is great it gives you 20 percent defense and 20 percent health those are the two best things that you want for infantry and 20 percent march speed which makes him one of the faster legendary infantry commanders in the entire game but a lot of you guys are not going to have him expertise which is definitely a downside which means he loses the march speed entirely which i think really stinks i think one of the cool things that they could do if they wanted to balance martell a little bit better is give him like 10 percent march speed without the expertise or something right i think that would be nice for those that have him at 5511 but he still gets 30 percent of tanky stats here 15 percent defense 15 percent health which is still really nice at 5511 his third skill doesn't do anything unless you're he's on your wall and the fourth skill gives you 30 percent counter attack damage which is actually quite good that means he's very prickly if he is swarmed in the open field and he also has the defense tree combine that with his tanky stats and his 30 percent all damage and you actually have a commander that really can hurt quite a lot if you try to swarm him down in the open field jumping over to his relic you'll see that he gets 35 percent attack and 10 percent extra health when it is double relics and i think that is really really nice for charles martel attack was the one stat that he was missing and they just gave him a ton of it with this relic which i think is great plus an extra little bit of tankiness with that health is always really nice and those stats add up really quickly you can see up top here that he has a total of 85 percent raw stats which is higher than some season of conquest commanders okay the problem with charles martel is that that's kind of all that he's doing he's kind of a raw stat stick and that's about it now that's not to say that stats aren't really meaningful obviously they are but as we've seen the equipment system come into the game and then talents and then iconic crystals and then the implementation of the armament system there's been more and more ways as the game has evolved to gain more stats right we have crystal technology to gain more stats right so there's plenty of ways to gain more stats in the game but there isn't any uh like raw damage here on charles martel he's not doing anything insane he's not applying a crazy debuff he's not buffing your allies right there's really not that much that he's doing and so his prominence has fallen in my opinion from being the best gold key commander in the early stages of rise of kingdoms down to number four on the list not to say that he's bad now but i think he's very vanilla so you can throw him in places in a pinch and honestly there are quite a few commanders in the game now that give you some buff if a shield is active and also that 30 percent bonus damage for four seconds means that whoever the secondary is to him can really pop off a powerful active skill to sort of make up for the lack of active skill damage that charles martel doesn't actually have and because of that these days you still will see charles martel sometimes in the open field with a herald now this pair was much more common i would say a year or two ago but you still see some people use it and i sometimes use it in kvk as well if you are on the back leg and you're playing the cheeseburger tactic and what that means is just sending out one army out of your out of your city the enemies are all around they're going to swarm down that army and then you retreat when you hit yellow uh and typically with your herald martel if it has decent gear and decent armaments you can trade relatively evenly sometimes positive if the enemies are really bad uh, or you may still get absolutely destroyed because power creep in the game has been pretty heavy in the last six to 12 months I would say but you do still see Charles Martel used in those instances and for being a really prickly counterattack damage tank he's still 
still pretty solid moving on to number three on the list we have pyrus and this is actually the latest greatest gold key commander to come into the game and i think that number three on this list pyrus himself and number two which we're gonna get to very soon can be interchanged it depends on what you're looking for so really i think pyrus you could definitely make the argument that he falls into the number two slot and when we go over number two i'll explain why i chose pyrus as number three even though you could make the argument otherwise but unlike charles martel pyrus actually does a lot of really interesting things for infantry okay you could see that he deals a 1400 single target damage factor and he gives you 20 percent more normal attack damage for three seconds so he actually trades out that shield that Martel has for a nice instant damage to one target and instead of 30 percent all damage it's 20 percent normal attack damage but with the introduction of smite damage in the game this actually could age much better than Charles Martel and really skyrocket him on this list in let's say a year from now so he's definitely a commander that you want to keep your eyes on the second skill gives you 10 percent health and 15 percent March speed really nice stuff there a little low on the health side but the stats for March speed are nice and unlike Charles Martel you do not need to expertise Pyrus to get access to that March speed and that is extremely important for infantry but it doesn't end there because when you're outside of your alliance territory you gain 20 percent more normal attack damage and we see that once again so there's a lot of synergy here with normal attack damage or Pyrus and honestly you could easily make the argument that in the early game a martel pyrus combo is devastating okay there's a little bit of lack of synergy with the skill damage we'll talk about that later but really i would say there's some great stuff here the third skill gives you 20 percent attack while on the map which means if he's in a garrison he does not get this 20 percent attack which is a bummer but a lot of you watching are probably only interested in field fighting anyway so that doesn't really change that much and also when you launch a normal attack you have a 10 percent chance to gain a shielding factor of 500 it's a small shield but it's instant and it's free there's a eight second cooldown which is a little bit long okay but that is really nice and there's some extra synergy with that shield which we'll get to in a moment the fourth skill says that you'll take 20 percent less skill damage and if you have a shield active you'll deal 10 percent more damage okay so sometimes you'll just get this shield and deal 10 percent more damage and if you pair him with martel well great news martel always gets a shield on his active skill and then he'll always be dealing 10% more damage while that shield is active. And remember, Martel's shield lasts for four seconds, assuming that it's not broken. So in a best case scenario, you'll get four seconds of 10% all damage. The expertise here says that whenever you are hit with a normal attack, you have a 10% chance to reduce the attacking troops attack by 30% for three seconds. So right there, that's a really powerful attack debuff. Also, it's when you're hit with a normal attack. So if you're being swarmed down, if you are being swarmed, you can debuff one of the targets that is swarming you it is an eight second cooldown which is quite long that's probably why he is a gold key commander okay we see a lot of uh, these eight second cooldowns on the gold key commanders it's it's kind of a bummer okay but it doesn't end there because he also gains 30 percent infantry defense and 10 percent bonus skill damage with his double relic so like i said before the early pairings with martel are super powerful but they're not perfect right that skill damage bonus is nice and the fact that you know martel does not have skill damage so really the bonus to skill damage is only going to take effect for the uh for the pyrus for his active skill right so really you, you might want to pair him with somebody that that's also dealing skill damage but nonetheless as a double infantry pairing all in i would say it's quite tanky it's going to deal a really nice amount of damage and it's really going to hurt somebody if they try to swarm you down as you'll see up top here when he's on the map right because that's when he gets his attack he'll have a total of 60 percent of stats and they're spread mostly across attack and defense with a little bit of health there i just realized that i had the wrong number for his uh his march speed it's actually 15 percent okay but at the end of the day pyrus is doing a little bit of everything he has less stats than martel but i would argue that he's going to be dealing more damage with that active skill and the bonus to skill damage and he still has a nice well-rounded kit here which i think means that he's going to age better than charles martel especially like i said earlier with the implementation of smite damage it would be interesting to see and i can't do this because I'm still waiting on the wheel of fortune to spin for my Liu Che, but I would love to see, you know, maybe Yoda or some Giga Chad mega whale can, uh, you know, pair up Liu Che with 
and expertise pyrus and see how that actually does i would be really interested to see those reports i'm sure some of them exist already out there if you guys know about them you can send them to me on my discord the link is going to be in the description below i'm very curious but overall pyrus i think is really really great especially for open field fighting moving on to number two we have mehmed now mehmed is kind of like everyone's fan favorite okay mehmed has really shot up in prominence with the implementation of the relic system in rise of kingdoms it was always stated that martel was the best gold key commander and mehmed was decent but now because of the relic in the game mehmed is quite good and he is basically one of the best secondaries in the game if you have no other choice you can kind of just slap Mehmed anywhere and he's super super versatile let's quickly go over what exactly he's doing if he's expertise he's going to deal a 1350 damage factor it's aoe to five targets the downside of this is his aoe cone is quite narrow so the probability of hitting five targets is pretty low unless you're in a kvk where there is a troop collision okay if you are in one of those kvks then you're probably gonna hit five targets almost every time if you're like colliding with a bunch of people but otherwise a lot of the times you're really only gonna hit like maybe three targets okay four if you're lucky the other downside is if he's not expertise it falls to 1150 so still decent uh it's only a 200 factor bump when he's expertise so that means at 5511 it's still a nice little aoe there he also gains 20 percent attack 20 percent skill damage and third skill only does things in rallies fourth skill gives you 10 percent troop capacity and some rallied army capacity as well and then if we hop over to his museum relic you'll see that he gets 30 percent troop health and another 10 percent extra skill damage which is really really good stuff here and that's pretty much it Mehmed is actually a very simple commander but when you understand how the meta currently works in rise of kingdoms and this could change over the course of the next year okay but currently the meta is still go all in on skill damage aoe skill damage is the meta and it has been for a long time and we also know that troop health is the most valuable stat typically depending on who you're pairing him with for any troop type or any commander again the fact that he's a leadership commander means that his stat buffs are universal it doesn't matter who you pair him with you could put him behind a nevsky or you could put him behind a cpo prime and you're still gonna get a nice chunk of raw stats raw skill damage and a skill damage bonus overall you could see he has a total of 50 percent of stats which makes it the second lowest in the video but he's tied where it matters and that is in the health department he is rivaled by martel with the highest amount of health that he gives for a gold key commander and unlike martel it's universal you can give it to anybody and so when you compare him to pyrus and like i said earlier i think him and pyrus could be easily interchanged on this list the reason that i chose Mehmed to be higher on the list is first of all if you've been playing the game for a long time you're probably gonna have a lot more progress made on your Mehmed so you know obviously Pyrus just came out the probability that you have a 5511 Pyrus right now from gold keys alone is pretty low but the probability that you have a 5511 Mehmed from playing the game for two years or so is pretty high it could be even better than that and also Mehmed is just so versatile right you can literally put him anywhere and I think that that is a value in itself the fact that he's super flexible makes him more valuable in my mind because that means that the probability that he can be power crept out of the game is a little bit lower so because he's so easy to use and because so many of you probably have more progress on your med anyway i think he deserves the second place spot on this list and also the final note here is that the increased troop capacity is deceptively good here uh, i think a lot of players don't know this but your damage output is directly proportionate to how many troops you bring to the battlefield okay so if you bring a 25 percent troop expansion and the other person brings a 25 troop expansion but you have a med there and you have the extra 10 percent on top of all that you're gonna have an edge it is a noticeable difference the damage formula which i've shown on this channel you can watch the videos i, I made a whole video talking about the rock battle formula it's got richard on the thumbnail the battle report okay check that video out i go in depth for the entire damage formula for rise of kingdoms or at least what we know about it but we know for sure that troop capacity is a big component of how much damage you're dealing whether that's skill damage whether that is normal attack damage like this matters a lot so even though Mehmed isn't doing as many things as pyrus i think he lands at the number two spot but with that being said who actually beats Mehmed to be at the top of the list 
the best gold key commander in rise of kingdoms and in my opinion i think it's the most i think a lot of you guys probably saw this coming i think the most is almost criminally underrated right now in rise of kingdoms and again we're talking about gold key commander so at best best case scenario i would say he's maybe a b or a tier legendary if he's expertise with the relic and the right pairs but i think what the most is doing is quite good okay if you look at his skills the weakest part about him i think is his three target aoe and that's saying a lot because just having aoe in the game is kind of a big deal it's only a thousand damage factor but when you compare it to all the other gold key commanders that's great okay it's only outclassed by Mehmed, and that's pretty much it he also reduces the healing of the targets he hits which isn't that big of a deal but there is a lot more healing in the game than you might think for example Boudicca prime heals pretty often on her fourth skill and that's one of the reasons why she's so good at dueling in rise of kingdom so there's lots of little areas where healing can be applicable i think there's also some healing in the defense tree as well but beyond that he gets 15 percent attack 10 percent march speed and 15 percent damage outside of alliance territory that's a lot of benefit for a single skill and one thing you'll notice here is that the attack is a little low the march speed is a little low the damage bonus is nice but then we move to the third skill and this gives him 10 percent defense on the map so again just like pyrus this won't work in a garrison but it will work for open field fighting and each troop attack has a 10 percent chance of debuffing the target increasing the skill damage that they take by 15 percent for three seconds eight second cooldown again the gold key commanders with these really long cooldowns on their very uh decent but more so average skills i would say regardless of that yes the defense number is a little low here but 15 percent skill damage taken increase is a really powerful debuff that means that anybody hitting that target is going to deal 15 percent more skill damage to them which is really good you could be swarming them down for example and this is again something you get as an instant proc it doesn't come at the cost of being part of your active skill or something like that the fourth skill says that you take 10 percent less counter attack damage okay and when you're attacked there's a 10 percent chance to deal skill damage to the target with a skill damage factor of 700 again an eight second cooldown kind of rough there but 700 instant proc damage is really good you have to think about what we're comparing him to we're comparing him to gold key matters okay El Cid's active skill for a thousand rage even with the with the relic is 1150 to a single target yes it has a disable here but this is giving you 700 damage factor for free randomly instant proc you don't have to do anything it doesn't cost your rage you still have your active skill and then finally the expertise gives you five percent less damage taken from infantry and when you use your active skill you gain 30 percent more normal attack damage bonus for three seconds again an eight second cooldown but that 30 percent normal attack damage bonus could age insanely well with smite damage okay now i'm making a little bit of a bet here that we're going to be getting smite damage for archers later down the line but can you imagine having a the most primary in season of conquest strictly because his secondary deals such an insane amount of smite damage that this buff is relevant okay I think that is actually nuts but if we take a look over here at his museum relic you're gonna find a crazy amount of stats you're gonna see 25 percent archer attack and 20 percent archer health okay now you could see that i moved all the stats down to the bottom here but that puts the mo's at 40 percent attack 10 percent defense and 20 percent health for archers with an aoe with debuffs with instant proc damage with 15 percent all damage on the third on the second skill here he's very well rounded and you'll see that the total stats for the most he has the second highest amount out of this entire list he's only behind charles martel but remember martel doesn't really do much else besides just give stats whereas the most does a ton of stuff here okay he has that 15 percent skill damage taken debuff he has the 10 percent less counter attack damage taken there's so many things that the most is doing and the sum of all of his parts i think make him the best gold key commander in rise of kingdoms now again is he s tier i don't think so he also came out a little over a year ago maybe almost a year and a half ago at this point so he is still one of the newer gold key commanders which means a lot of you might not have very much progress in him and certainly we are discussing him at his expertise in this video which a lot of you won't have but regardless even at 5511 he's still bringing a lot to the table and you can still get his really incredible relic and the other thing to note here is that all of his skills work in the open fields okay this is something that we saw with pyrus as well 
well but if you look at somebody like Mehmed one of his skills is only for rallying cities if you look at somebody like Martel one of his skills is only for city garrisons right if you look at Mulan for example one of her skills is bonus experience so a lot of the commanders in the gold key tier don't have the luxury of having all their skills and their expertise be relevant in open field PvP and I think the Moe's checks that box and pretty much every other box that there is now I wish that his skill damage here was like 1200 or 1400 just a little bit more to bump him up right uh, and I think that that would really make him a contender but regardless I still think he's probably best gold key commander in rise of kingdoms and that's pretty much it guys hopefully if you are a relatively newer player in the game or maybe you're free to play hopefully this video shed some light on a few commanders that maybe you've been overlooking for a while and give you some ideas as to how you might be able to use them you can slap the most behind one of your other archers and bring a ton of stats and debuffs to the open field you can slap martel behind somebody or pyrus and you might be able to just perform okay also if you made it to the end of this video i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below what you would rank the top five gold key commanders i'm curious to see what you guys think and where you put Mehmed versus pyrus and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace